This is going to be a simple valuation method that you could use to find the intrinsic value of a company stock. I'll be using the company's future book value and discounting it back to present day to find the intrinsic value. I'm going to go step by step and create a worksheet on Excel in which you can reuse to evaluate uh, other companies. So let's get started. Uh, starting off, we're going to go ahead and just fill out the template that we're going to be using on Excel. So we'll call this uh, book value growth. We're going to have four columns starting with the year, period, the actual book value, and then the book value growth. For the year, we're going to start in 2008 and we're going to go uh, 10 years down. So that will take us to 2017. So there are 10 years here. And then for period, since 2008 is going to be our base year, this wouldn't count as like a, a growth period. The first growth period would start in 2009, and 2009, which would be the next year after the base. That will give us nine uh, different uh, periods. Now we're going to actually get the book value of the company. Now, the company I picked was AT&T, the telecommunications company. And we're going to go ahead and use their book value for this uh, intrinsic value valuation. So to get uh, a company's book value, it could be uh, any company. The site that I use is uh, Morningstar. And I'll show you guys how to access Morningstar. You go to your browser and go to Morningstar.com. And then on the search uh, box here, you can go ahead and put the ticker symbol for the company so you could access all their uh, data. So AT&T is ticker symbol T. And here will come out the results. You want to make sure you pick the company that's trading on the exchange that you are using. So I use the New York Stock Exchange. You would pick that one for AT&T. And as it loads, we're going to go ahead and click on key ratios and full key ratios data. And then here will give us a 10 year uh, summary of a whole bunch of different metrics here and yeah, a couple more ratios on the bottom. But what we're concerned with for this evaluation is the book value per share. As you can see here, we're starting in 2008 and we're going to go all the way to 2017. This TTM is the trailing 12 months. You could use that in place of 2017, but I like to just use the 2017 uh, number because this is including uh, a portion of 2016 and 2017. So to get this number on Excel or these numbers, uh, all, you have, all you have to do is just copy and paste. It's that simple. So we're going to get the 10 years of the book value. And then what I like to do is paste it on the bottom here first and then recopy it and then go to the book value column and then transpose uh, it. And all that's doing is just taking it from a horizontal uh, view to a vertical view. And we can format this to the accounting format. And the book value growth, you actually don't need this column. Uh, I just like having it because it gives you a, a picture of how the company is growing their book value over year or, or over each year, but you really don't need it. But just to get that in, that will be in a percentage. So that shows that from 2008 to 2009, they grew at around five and a half percent the book value. So that's the growth for book value. Uh, again, you don't really need this. All you need is just the a book value each year that they reported. And now you're going to go ahead and get the actual uh, average growth. So from 2008 on average, what percentage did they grow to get to a book value of 2035 today? And to do that, we're going to use the uh, rate function, which we'll get to in a second 10 year growth. All right. So the rate function is going to take the periods in between the the years there's nine growth periods in this data there are no payments 
and the present value is the value in which we started, which was in 2008 was 1635. And the future value, which is the value that's at today, is 2035. And then we're going to put zero here and close this out. And that gives us around 2.5%. So since 2008, AT&T has grown their book value by around 2.5%. Now we're going to go ahead and use this information to go ahead and uh, find the intrinsic value for AT&T. So for dividends, we want to put the amount of dividends that we expect AT&T to pay over the next 10 years. Now we could go back to Morningstar and on the Morningstar site, it shows the dividend payments that AT&T made for each year if they made any. And as you can see, they're currently paying, or at least the last 12 months, they've been paying $2 a share. Now, if you do some research, you'll see that AT&T typically raises their, their dividend by $0.04 cents each year, around 3 to $0.04. Cents. So you could, you could put $2.04 here for future dividends, but I usually just like to put the trailing 12 months as it's a more conservative estimate. Now the current book value, that's easy. That's the book value that's, that's at right now, which is the 2035. The book value growth is what we calculated here, that we're expecting the book value to grow at around 2.5% for the next 10 years. And actually, that's, let me bring up a point here that we're talking about the book value growth. For AT&T, a company that's been around for more than 30 years, the book value growth of the past 10 years is a pretty good indicator of how the company is going to grow for the next 10 years. Now, if you take a look at a company that's uh, just uh, started or it's like four or five years old, those book value numbers, that growth rate is going to be a lot higher. So you have to take that into account what, uh, what growth rate you're going to give the company. You don't have to use the prior 10 years growth rate, but for a company like AT&T, it's a pretty safe bet to use the prior 10 years growth rate. So we're going to discount this back 10 years and I'll get to why we're using 10 years in a minute, but let's go ahead and get the future book value. Now the future book value, all we're doing is we're saying that the current book value right now is 2035. It's going to grow at 2.46% each year for 10 years and then in 10 years what's going to be that book value and to find that we can just use the future value function which will take the rate at 2.46 in the next 10 years again there's no payments here and then the present value right now is 2035 zero close it up and you get 25.95. If you get a negative number, you can just put the present value negative and I'll take out the, the negative number. But basically in the next 10 years, you could expect AT&T's book value to be around the $26 range. Now the discount rate is going to be the return on investment that you could get uh, if you were to place your money in something else besides than, uh, rather than this stock that we're evaluating. And typically you want to pick the rate that you can get in a risk free investment where there's no risk and you're pretty much guaranteed to get that rate or that return. And we usually use, or I usually use the 10 year federal note. And to get the rate on the 10 year federal note, you can go to treasury.gov. And again, we use the treasury note because it's a, essentially a risk-free invest, investment. So you go to treasury.gov, you scroll down to this uh, button here, view this data, and you want to go ahead and click on the first uh, link here, the daily treasury yield curve rates. And as you can see right now, the 10 year uh, note as of 11.6 is at three uh, 0.22%. So that's what we're going to use for the discount rate. 3.22%. And now we can get to the share price. 
and the share price all we're going to be uh, uh, evaluating is the uh, we're going to take the book value and we're going to bring it back to present uh, day with the discount rate and we're also going to take into consideration the dividends and I'll get to that in a second so we're going to use the present value function we're going to use the discount rate what we could get in another investment we're going to use the 10 year period because the 10 year period is what we used to get to the future book value and it's also what the 10 year federal note is the time period and then now the payments are going to be two dollars from uh, the stock now the reason why we put the payment is when we buy a stock like for example AT&T uh, not only would we get the appreciation of the stock over time which would be our return on investment but we're also going to be receiving dividend payments each year so we need to factor that in so in this case we're uh, picking two dollars as our dividend and then the future value of the book value was $25.95, around $26. So we're going to close this up. And that gives us a intrinsic value of around $35.77. A quick thing here is that this uh, share price or this intrinsic value is just one of many different metrics that you could use. In this scenario, we used book value, but you could use uh, discounting cash flows, uh, revenue growth, uh, earnings per share. There's a lot of different uh, valuations that you can use, and this is just one of them. So it's a good starting point. Again, it's not the, the, the final answer. This doesn't have to be accurate, but it's a good estimate to start off in. Hope you guys enjoyed, and thanks for watching.